this un- kind of understanding that cost management is 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 estimating, and all we do is give a price. We price something, mm-hmm. and obviously, over the last number of years, we've been trying to change that narrative, especially on the international market outside UK and Ireland. That cost management is not just estimating; it's it's much much more. But can you explain that? So, so from our perspective, um, the key thing here is. It's a, an all-encompassing project delivery strategy, yeah. co- commercial management, cost management. Yeah. So whilst we might set budgets at the outset, and yeah. I, I would emphasize setting realistic budgets, yeah. so going to someone who you know understands the market, who the yeah. players are, what the type of uh, the product you're looking for, yeah. so when they set a budget, that that's in the right order of cost. Mm. As you move through the stages then, whether that's going from estimates to cost plans, you get to a point where you now get into managing those budgets. Yeah. So for me, it's all about the granularity and transparency for our clients. Yeah. So initially you might have, I want a building. Yeah. It's 10,000 square meters. Yeah, functionality is X. So you're really at high level stuff. So cost management, uh, it's not just estimating then. So change management, risk management, all encompassing commercial management really is what we're trying to get that message Indeed. out. And it's the clarity, I suppose, and understanding how that fits into their project. Yeah. So just like with any industry, um, if you have a sore leg, you'd har- you'd, you'll go to a doctor. Yeah. Um, with doing commercial management in construction, yeah. you need someone who has the expertise to manage your money and help your team understand how yeah. that's being spent. So that's not just simply how much does it cost, but it's actually how do we manage the granularity of each budget. So the majority of our projects are significant in value, yeah. multifaceted, yeah. multiple stakeholders managing them, different budget constraints, controls. You could have... 150 different um, different um, shareholder suppliers feeding into that. And for us, what we try and do is drive the granularity and transparency into that budget management. So the budget isn't just a fixed entity of you said it was 100 million yeah. or 50 million or 20 million, but you now have a, a budget that you're working within with a realistic level of contingency that the whole team have bought into. We'll come to that in a mo- moment about uh, risk and understanding risk. Yeah. But then what you do is you're tracking against your actual costs. So really, if you're using your commercial manager correctly, as a client, I'd say, you should be saying how much you, you need to be open with them to say, this is how much I'm paying out. Yeah. So now you've got actuals feeding into it. Then you've also got committed costs feeding against your budget. How much have we placed orders for? 50 million out of 100, 70 out of 100. So you know you have to have that money banked. And now you're looking at your ETC, your estimate to complete. Now you really are challenging your team to work within that constraint. For me, that's commercial management. Yeah, And I think, again, coming back to the just estimating, Preparing an estimate is one thing, but as a client, you need to have a strategy of how you're going to spend that. And yes, we understand that you're going to spend it on the building that you want to build. But how are you going to divide that up in terms of procurement, for example? What's your strategy? That's even down to your consultants, not just your contractor. There's a whole aspect to this cost management, commercial management. And estimating is just one sliver or facet of the entire kind of skill set of delivery. Absolutely. I, I think we should think of it, um, I go back to, you have an accountant, to, some people have accountants to manage their, their own finances. Yeah. It just happens that you're now in a place where you've got a commercial cost manager who's actively involved. Mm. They're a step better than an accountant when you're managing your money because they understand the process. Yeah. So I would argue, not only do you have construction costs, and like we manage for our clients at the moment, mm. we've got different clients who like to manage their construction budgets by ICMS structure, yeah. so International Cost Measurement Standards. Yeah. Then you've got some who like to manage it by package. Yeah. So now you're getting yes. into how would you like your cake cut? Because yeah. we can mind it in that fashion yeah. and you can understand the drawdown and the expenditure of it. Yeah. Now you come on to completely outside of the, con- the contractor's costs. Yeah. How am I handling my own client costs? Yeah. My fees, my fit out budgets. Uh, uh, have we got enough in each of them? Have we got enough contingency in each of them? Yeah. Are there risks that we need to manage outside yeah. of that? Like it becomes multifaceted yeah. for someone who's trained to manage. Yeah. Now imagine you're giving it to someone whose job is to deliver the project. Yeah. So this is why you need different skill sets to come in and su- to support yeah. your team in delivering large projects or medium to large projects. Because I certainly wouldn't embark on spending any type of money unless I had the correct controls in place. It's an interesting one because um, we've been having discussions recently on the the pharma industry, data center industry, mission critical, and the, some organizations and how they structure their teams when it comes to commercial is 
they've estimating doing estimates at the beginning. Then the estimates are handed over to project controls. Project controls, and I, I queried a number of people on this, what's the background of, of experience and education in the project controls, generally from financing or business? Yeah. And so that control that you believe you're buying isn't actually control. It's, it's reporting. It's reporting, exactly. Yeah, it's after the event. The crash yeah. has happened. Yeah. They're just telling you it happened. Yeah. And so the realisation for me winning those conversations is, is that the cost manager, commercial manager, and the team associated with them, they bring not just the experience and knowledge base around cost and estimating, but commercial and technical. They understand how a building is built. They understand architecture. They understand structures, MEP. The um, program, how it fits together. Sustainability, LCA and carbon, etc. All of that aspect that that have an, a direct impact on your budget, on your cost, uh, on your estimate to complete. And it's that skill set that is is what we're talking about, that commercial management, not just estimating. So I kind of refer to that as a healthy tension that can exist in a project. Mm. You, you want a cooperative uh, team that communicate openly with each other, but you also need somebody who's controlling and managing, yeah. who's thinking a few months ahead. Mm. So like give you an example of a, a recent activity we were working on with one particular client. We wanted to get ahead out of this reporting situation into managing. Mm. So we took an active role in ten, helping the contractor tender. Mm. So actually issuing the BQs, mm. fully uh, interactive with the contractor and the client. So everyone understood the scope, mm. issuing that to the designers so they mm. could go, yeah, actually that's, that's, that's exactly what I, I drew. Or yeah. certain things are missing. Yeah. Let's identify them now. We'll yeah. put them on the next stage. Yeah. Really it should be in the design. Yeah. But we're, we're in a place where that type of active management, collaboration or collaborate, you know. that kind of active involvement of each other. We're, we are in a far greater place as a team, mm -hmm. contractor included in that, yeah. of visibility of what the client wants. Yeah. So we're all aligned. So there was no misunderstanding of quantities. Yeah. So at times we were able to bring up the models and go, we don't think we need this item that somebody might say. And we go, so we don't need this item that's currently drawn. Oh, actually, I do, yeah. yeah. So it's really using, now yeah, you're talking, in interactive, allowing right. your tech to enable the team to understand it at a much quicker level. So we weren't doing this in silos. This was collaborative workshops, smaller workshops, yeah. but collaborative sessions, bringing them up, bringing subcontractors and suppliers into those. Yeah. Like that's when it starts to get exciting because the sub is saying, actually, I don't price that item like this. If you change and do this, this and this, yeah. I can come back with a slightly better a and better way of looking at it. And those type of interactions, it's not necessarily face-to-face -face around the table, right? This this stuff is managed remotely on teams and online, etc. Well, I was in Ireland. Uh, some of them were elsewhere in Europe um, and some were further afield. Mm. So, but the thing is that interaction was happening purely, well, some of it in a purely digital space. Yeah. yeah. And we're sharing, the, we're sharing the models live. Yeah. We get the models every, I'm going to say every seven to 10 days. Yeah. You're now in a place where that's useful for the team because we can react quickly. Yeah. So things that we can't afford, we can immediately flag them and go, is that, are you sure you wanted this? Yeah. Nice to have, need to have. Is this really a need Absolutely. to have or nice to have? It's nice to have. Well, we need to put that away. Then. Are you sure you can afford it? You're going to yeah. find budget for us. So, so that's coming back to the estimate was one element, yeah. one ingredient. Yeah. You move away from that ingredient as you go through the process. Yeah. It's there as a, yeah. as a yardstick for yeah, us yeah, all to yeah. understand. Yeah. It's your target, I guess, right? And, it's, and it's your it's absolutely. But you're kind of now you've got, instead of having one number, you'll have, you know, if you take your ice, your, your cost build up from your contractor, that could be, that could be thousands of items, could be hundreds of items. Yeah. Now you're into how do we interface with the project team yeah. and how do we control that money pot for the client? So we're into cost centers. Yeah. And now you're into, do we want to do that by package or else? Yeah, I think that's your procurement there. Then, So like you're describing an, what seems to be an awful lot of different uh, facets to this uh, to this commercial management. And some of our listeners might go, well, hang on a second, Sean. We're already kind of doing that. The, you have the procurement team that deal with procurement. You have the project controls team that dealing with the controlling, the reporting. You have the project, manager, have the project manager doing the risk and change. You have the architects and engineers managing change and, your and design. Who's brilliant at managing costs for you, and yeah. all these people are call it. That's not their main duty or their main role to you or skill set exactly. Yeah. I would argue you absolutely need somebody who's going to be solely dedicated and selfish to maintaining rigor, control, mm. discipline. Mm. And it's not just about cost; it's data. Mm. It's about the underlying design. It's going back mm. to the scope. Yeah. I wanted 20 blue doors. Yeah. 
you've ordered 24 red doors. Yeah. Wh- why? Why? Wh- I don't need 24. I need 20. And that one doesn't comply with the standards I need to sell the asset. Yeah. Yeah. So can you please price what I've asked for? Yeah. Or tell me why I can't have that. Yeah. And, the, and there's a commercial uh, association with that then. If we get into a discussion around, well, it's red doors that we have on site. We want it blue. Do the red fit? What's the cost impact? plus or minus to use Absolutely. the client or to use the supplier, et cetera, et cetera. And that commercial relationship and negotiation, I, I, I already know, and I don't want to defend any of our designer friends out there, but that's, that's not their skill set. Some of them are brilliant at it. I, yeah. I don't disagree. But what I would say when you're handling any relatively large sum of money, it, a conflict of interest will occur. Yeah. Something needs to be designed. It might have been forgotten about. It may not. You're in a place where what you want is someone who's impartial, str- very factual, but also go back to the point about you're managing a budget to actual costs, mm. to commit a cost to an ETC. Yeah. Very estimate few. Estimate to complete. Very estimate, exactly. Very few engineers, architects will carry that granularity because yeah. they won't be interfacing with your accounts team. Yeah. No, very rarely do. Yeah. Imagine trying to uh, c- correlate purchase orders back to cost centers, yeah. back to uh, priceable items. They'd be lost. Yeah. And I, I don't think that's a bad thing. No. I think the key thing here is about transparency and granularity, transparency in yeah. what the product is yeah. and how we're paying a fair price for it. Yeah. So we had an instance in the last probably couple of months. We had a, a project that we were working on. Yeah. And there was a degree of ambiguity of certain prices that were coming back. Mm. So we said, how can we er- eradicate that or remove it? So the key thing is we said, right, let's come to a, co- come to a common space. Let's all agree that we're all going to use the model. Yeah. And we'll all interrogate the model yeah. collaboratively, yeah. feed it back yeah. and periodically get it updated. So yeah. before we need the output, so before we need to produce the package yeah. and do the BQ, yeah. that we've had two or three goes at this. So nobody misses up the pro, nobody messes the program. Center point of information becomes Absolutely. modeled in. Yeah. We now get to a point where and what we did in that is, we, I said, let's, let's get some of the key subbies involved because let's give them a draft and let's see if they come up with something different. And the, and the, I, and, and the, the brilliant thing was we all kind of evolved into a situation that we all had a kind of a centre of truth that we're happy, the client was happy to work with. As you mentioned, it's been interrogated by all the stakeholder groups that have an by opinion seven or eight involvement. Pe- seven or eight good, good people. You're now in a place where we instantly got to a fraction of where we needed to be. But the... The, the constant was the quantities, which some people go, oh, I need 5,000 there, I need 3,000 there. Actually, the factual answer is two five hundred. Are you pricing risk now yeah. into your quantities? Yeah. Which is, for me, it, again, it's like, let's understand where we're letting risk in. Because if it's real, who should own it? As opposed to, yeah. oh, there's just money in just there. Just keep putting in, keep, yeah, yeah, risk on risk, which is cost and cost on cost or price and price, you know. So th- that was that's that's yeah. a, a really useful collaborative collaborative way to approach cost management. But it's so again, it's it seems like there's many different aspects to this commercial management role. That's not just estimating, but what the common theme in the entire thing is is that the appreciation for for your budget, your cost, and the impact of the daily workings. So change management, for example, and risks on that cost, and the client has assurance that there's someone that has 100% focus every day looking at this, making sure that we're on the right track. So the key thing I'd say to any client or any um, whoever's in charge of that is clear roles and responsibilities. Mm. So we'll talk about change and risk in, in two yeah. separate ways. Mm. So change for me, change needs to be clear. And I would say before anybody embarks on doing any form of change, I call them one-pagers. I'd expect my designers to do a one-pager of what the change is likely to do. Mm. Have a chat with the contractor, put an order of cost. Mm. Again, a pure finger in the air, order of cost. Or you, you could do, we could do it ourselves. Yeah. We could, but being collaborative, you get the people who are going to be taking a risk on it to take a view. So we have a one-pager, take a view on an order of cost, tell the client, look, this change is going to cost, it'll save you half a million, it'll cost you two million, whichever it is. Actually, you know what, we need some fees on that because now I need to get well, this designer, this designer. Impact, right? Exactly. Yeah. So you, and you also weigh it up in terms of uh, life cycle cost. Sustain, are we gonna, is it going to affect our sustainability credits? Yeah. Oh, I didn't think of that. Yeah. And uh, it could, you have to consider it in its, all, in, in, in all aspects. Does yeah, it affect the isolation. net litter area? Not in isolation. 